Hi guys, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Uh, this will be the fifth electronic block tutorial uh, for our electronics learning board. Uh, see links below to other related videos. Uh, more specifically, what you will need to know for this video is how to use the 74LS93 uh, counter circuit. Uh, that is a relatively long tutorial, but it's really helpful. That's going to help us increment our 7 segment display. So the two chips you're looking at are the 74LS 47 BCT, BCD to 7 segment uh, display decoder uh, chip and the um, and a common anode 7 segment display. So I've written out all of the different pinouts. For the 74LS47 there are, uh, sorry that's incorrect, that's 16. There are 16 different pins, pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so I've labeled 1 and 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There is a notch on the left hand side of the chip to tell you which is pin 1. Pin 1 is always just below that notch. So, I've written out the pinouts here. Ignore this for now. Uh, if you watch the counter video, and I really suggest you do, uh, there are uh, four pins that, that are basically our clock inputs. Our least significant bit, most significant bit. A, B, C, D. This has a binary weight, weight of 1, 2, 4, and 8. And we're going to have our 555 timer oscillating and, and incrementing our decade counter, which is our 74LS93, videos below. And these, they can count between, two, between 0 and 15. They're going to be uh, uh, connected to pins 1, 2, 6, and 7. So, 1, 2, 6 and 7. Um, there are three pins here, LT, RBI, or RBI and, R and B BI, RBO. All we have to do is connect those to 5 volts. Our VCC is pin 16. Our ground is pin 8. So what we need is we need a 5 volt supply to power our circuit. And uh, we need to connect these three pins to 5 volts, take our counter pins, and again, if you watch that video, you'll understand uh, the A, B, C, D, and outputs of the 74LS93 are connected to pins 1, 2, 6, and 7. And on the top side here, we've talked about VCC, but there are, um, there are seven different uh, drivers for our 7 segment display. Uh, e, D, C, B, A, G, F, or rather A, B, C, D, E, F, G but they are in different pins. You'll notice that on the 7 segment display there are seven different um, there are seven different segments. Each of them has its own LED. The lower right is C, lower is D, uh, lower left is E, middle is G, upper right is B, upper left is F, and top is A. Now we'll talk about how the LEDs are, are actually working, but what happens is these outputs, uh, A to F right here, act to sync voltage, or, or in sync, sync current rather, um, and they, so they act as essentially grounds when they're enabled. So this chip takes the binary clock data and basically decodes it and so that if, there's a, if there is a 1 in binary on the four inputs, then C and B will be lit up. And uh, if, say, there's a binary input of 4, then the F, G, B, and C segments would be lit up. If there's a binary input of 9, A, F, G, B, and C would be lit up. Hopefully that makes sense. In the case where an 8 was, uh, but we had, there was a binary input of 8 on our, on our uh, decoder, there all, all 7 segments would be lit up. So really all we have to do here is before we make connections between this bad boy and this bad boy, I'm going to um, I'm going to make the basic connections for our power supply and our RBI, BI, and RBO uh, slash LT and our LT pin. Sorry. Then we will work on the connections between here and here. And in a minute, I should should say a few minutes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this up on a breadboard with an oscillator 74LS uh, 74LS93 and these two chips, so you'll see how they all work together. Now I did a tutorial on this last week, 
but I tried to get to, to, to fit too much information into it. So I'm going to try to break this one down a little bit, break these down into three different videos. So just give me a second. So this is our power supply. This is the schematic symbol for a battery. Uh, our power supply in uh, here is five volts, and that is uh, this that we call that VCC. VCC is a typical term for a power supply. Uh, anywhere where you see this reference is connected. So imagine a wire connected to here, to here, to here. This is powering 74LS47. It's also powering the seven segment display. Now what you'll notice is there's actually two VCC pins, uh, pins three and eight, on the uh, on the on the display, our seven segment display. However, we only have to worry about one because they're connected internally. So use either or, use both, doesn't make a difference. So ground. This is our ground reference, our DC ground negative. Anywhere you see this, imagine a wire connecting it. So now we have to connect our RBI, our BI, RBO, and LT pins to 5 volts. We have to connect our uh, binary inputs to our counter. And then what we have to do is we have to bring some current limiting resistors into the equation. And I'll show you why in just a minute. Three four and five are all connected to VCC. Now if we, our uh, chip can properly decode. So pin one is B, pin two is C, uh, pin six is D, and pin seven is A. So you'll notice I have numbers beneath them. This would make sense if you watched the other counter video. A has a, is the least significant bit. It has the uh, binary weight of one. D is our most significant bit. It has a binary weight of eight. B is, has a binary weight of two, and C has a binary weight of four. So if if the if uh, we're receiving if these lines are pulled high, let's say C and A, four plus one is five. So then it, the decoder takes that and will drive a five on the seven segment display. If B and C are high and D and A are low, two plus four, set six. Oops, seven, <laughs> six. Um, if um, D and A are high, C and B are low, 9, and so on. Now, our 7-segment seven dis seven decoder here uh, actually can display some other characters if you go above 9. They're just kind of nonsensical characters. They're not even hexadecimal characters. They're just kind of nonsensical, in my opinion, anyway. Um, so we're actually going to be using, when we make our circuit, we're going to ignore the other numbers. We're going to configure our 74LS93 to reset at 10, so 9 is the last digit that we actually see. Anyhow, that's our interface to our counter. These are the four counter pins. So now, let's talk about connecting the 74LS47 to the 7 second display. Sorry about the light. As you can see, I've connected res resistors to the segment lines. Our power supply is already connected to, VC uh, to VCC, 5 volts. All of the resistors have the same value, 470 ohms. Uh, you can get away with probably 240 to 600. I typically like to use those 470 ohm resistors or, or 390, 390 ohm resistors. It doesn't really matter that much. Um, and these are current limiting resistors. They protect each of the segments from uh, from being destroyed by the driver. Now I'll tell you why that makes sense uh, after we're done making these connections. But as you'll see, pin 1 is E, pin 2 is D, pin 4 is C. We're not using pins 3 and 5. Pins uh, Pin 5 is or 6 is B, 7 is C, 8 VCC. Uh, as you can see here and here, um, pins nine, pin nine is F and pin ten is G. So what what you might remember is on the top of our decoder chip, there are uh, there are pins labeled A to G. So what we have to do is connect A from the driver to A the A segment on here. So in the case of A, A is pin thirteen. So nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I need to connect that to pin 7. So here, sorry, that should be labeled A. And for B, 10, 9, pins 9, 10. So that's, sorry, D. D can is connected to here. I'm going to make these connections, and this will be exactly how you see it on the breadboard. We're going to, once I'm done making these connections, we're going to put it on the breadboard right before I tell you why these current limiting resistors are uh, required. So, I ran into space, so I actually used blue to connect these two points and green to connect these two points. But, as you can see, all of the pins here correspond to pin, the pins here. So, pin 9 goes to E. 
pin 10 goes to D, pin 11 goes to C, 12, and so on. You get the point. Anyhow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this, quickly tell you about why the current loading resistors are needed, and then we'll finally get to the lab. So in the 7 segment display, there's actually 8 of these, 8 LEDs, including the little dot that I was talking about. We're only using 7. Anyhow, for instance, let's say this is the E segment. It's called common anode, this 7 segment display, because all of the LEDs are connected to VCC. They're, all of the anodes are connected together. This is the positive side of the LED, called the anode. And uh, the cathodes, they're all separated. This is the negative, the negative side of the LED. So when this is connected to, when this is uh, sunk to ground, the LED will light up. However, uh, let's say that this is the output pin, the, the pin on this ship, right here. If you just connect that to ground, it's going to, uh, it's going to, like, it's going to pull as much current as possible through VCC, through the uh, diode, and the diode's going to say, oh, can't take it, burn out. And it's going to happen fast. Now, the, um, that's exactly what the decoder does, is it acts like a path to ground. Let's say this is the, this is the E pin on the, uh, on the uh, on the seven segment uh, display driver, the seven seven four LS forty seven. So when that port is enabled, it acts as an open sink. It sinks current through VCC through the diode. So what you need to do is you need to act. You need to put a current limiting resistor in the path to limit the current. Um, and so that should, you know, and that that makes the LED safe, and the LED will last potentially forever, or certainly longer than you or I will live. Uh, that's the nice thing about LEDs is they truly do last a very long time if they're treated well. So, left alone, not enabled, it doesn't make a difference. But as soon as as soon as the E E port is enabled, what'll happen is current will flow through the diode and through the ground internally in the chip. This is essentially an internal ground. It's called an open source or open collector output. Anyhow, if you don't have that there, so you can say goodbye to your segments. The other two block videos will tell you exactly what's going on here. I've got my 555 timer in, uh, set to A-stable mode. It's creating pulses. Each time it creates a pulse, my counter counts. The rightmost bit is my A bit. Uh, second from the right is B. Third from the right is C. And first on the left is D. And D has is, has worth 8. A is worth 1. Uh, B is worth 2. C is worth 4. Anyhow... Moving on, uh, what I have here is a 74LS47 and 7 segment uh, display. So uh, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to make the power connections. I've got VCC, uh, we'll have VCC connected to pin 14, or sorry, 16 upper left, and ground connected to pin 8 lower right, and I will connect VCC to um, pin 8 on the top. There are 5 pins again on the bottom and 5 pins on the top. This is the dot I was referring to. So I will make my power connections. Then I will make my counter connections. I also need to keep in mind that I need to connect those three pins to VCC. So I will be doing that as well. Let's start with all of the power lines. Using very tiny jumpers, I've connected pins 3, 4, and 5. And I've used one wire to connect that back to our VCC line. I've connected pin 16 to our VCC line. I've connected pin 8 of the 7 segment display to the VCC line. I've also connected... Uh, I've also connected uh, um, pin 8 to ground. So now what we want to do is we want to connect our uh, counter pins. So A, B, C, and D to our 74LS47. Now if you watch both videos, uh, or if you rather, you can actually look at the data sheet for 74LS47 and 74LS93 and, inter and connect those four pins together as well. All of this work is done with you on the electronics learning board, um, and it's got tons of projects on it. This, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help you to understand exactly how the theory works before you're doing all the plug-in projects. The nice thing about the board is the fact that you can just, all of this stringing along all of this wire is, is all done for you. It's just a matter of plugging point A to point B, putting in a few plugs, and off you go. Your project's ready, and you can explain it. Anyhow, back to, back to the circuit. All, uh, all four binary input pins are connected, so now it's just a matter of putting our, set, our, our resistors in series with the A to G outputs on the, on the decoder to the A to G inputs, or I should say cathodes, on the seven segment display. 
So plug those in and uh, let's have at it. Okay, I'm going to turn off the lights in just a second so you can see this better, but rightmost LED is, is A, left, left is D, as you can see right here, A is worth 1, B2, C4, and D8. So right now, 1, A is worth 1, 2, or B is worth 2, C is worth 4, plus A is, one, is 5, plus B is 6, C, B, A, C plus B, B, you have to add them up, it's going a bit... It's going it's going faster than I'd like for it to go, but hopefully you can understand. Two. Two plus one is three. Four. Four plus one is five. Four plus two is six. Four plus two plus one is seven. Eight. Eight plus one is nine. And I have it resetting at ten. Because I don't want for it to uh I don't want for want for it to uh to offer those weird symbols that I was talking about. So I hope that makes sense. Binary representation, decimal representation. And that's it. Now I've done all three blocks. There's three videos explaining how this all works. The 555 timer in A-stable mode, the 74LS93 counter, and the 74LS47, obviously the decoder, and the seven-segment display. I hope you found this, uh, this useful. This... Uh, Electronics learning board is what you what I'm hoping some of you will will be interested in. Uh, it's up for pre-order at engineeringshock.com and electroniclessons.com. Even if you aren't interested, I hope you're enjoying the tutorials. Uh, I've got several more coming before we get on uh, on the uh, the actual electronic learning board project sets. So stay tuned and thanks again for watching.